it is okay. So about 10 years ago, I began a journey of traveling around, being consumed by uh, my love for the beloved. And a lot of amazing things have happened in that time. I will share some of those stories uh, if I continue to do this. So I am not exactly sure which of my reflections I'm going to read, but it seems I should begin with this one called Freedom. I want to blast down the walls you have forced yourself to live behind in your civilization, your culture, your psychology, philosophy, and religions, and then gently lovingly walk you to that door that was created just for you since before your birth. Your true love is behind it, waiting for your embrace. Come with me. Chop the wood for the fire that's been lit for ages. Come with me. Walk the walk that's been offered since the time we were born. There is a clear way through the forest. I will take your hand for a while. Yes, your hard shell, your crusty outer layer may be singed away. Yes, you will become lost and then Find yourself again. The cost for this treasure hunt. Your soul. What will you win? Your soul. Why bother? Freedom. So this reflection called Returning from Separation has a bit of a story to it. I think maybe seven years ago, I was with my Oregon friends and we were walking to uh, Rainy Falls, going over a lot of creeks, headed for the big waterfall. We had a picnic there and Coming back, we decided to separate and go slow and just experience the oneness of the forest and the water. And so, so there I am walking along right foot into the mother, left foot into the mother, just really being present and just, you know, open and just, oh, I'm feeling all this oneness around me and all of a sudden I turned this this corner and I just got hit by lightning and you know not physical lightning but like spiritual lightning and just BAM and I had to sit down uh, you know no one else was anywhere around and and I sat down and this is the voice I heard this is what it said Why are you trying to return to me? I've not gone anywhere. You are trying to be one with me. Why? Do you not know? I am reaching for you. I am ready to hold you. If you will just fall into my arms. I have been reaching towards you with such power. If you relax, I will almost knock you over with oneness. Put your arms down. Close your eyes. In this moment, in the presence, we are. 
Just let me love you. Do you know how long I've waited for you to know who you are? I will take it from here. You do not need to reach out. You do not need to reach out for anything. Just let me love you. You are worried about oneness? How much can you receive? Open. 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 You will have all the oneness you can handle. So this was about seven years ago, and about ten years ago exactly, I began what I hear called the Ascension Process. Um, I began writing and journaling a lot. And I'm wondering how many of you would, based on a dream you had, I had a dream on Easter morning, um, and how many of you, based on a dream, would just walk away from your whole life, uh, your family, your community, your job, uh, your success, just walk away because the dream told you? So in that dream, I, right on Easter morning when the sun was coming up, I was given a single white rose by uh, a being from India, a young man, and he very gently offered this single white rose, and he said, this is yours if you want it. And it's yours to share if you should choose. So I had no idea what that meant. I woke up and I knew something had shifted. And I asked uh, a reverend, New Thought Reverend, what does that dream mean? And he said, well, just that you're very loved. And I did find out a few years later, the single white rose is the calling card for the Ascended Masters. So this was basically when I became more of a cosmic being connected in a, a greater scope of things. And I went to the forest in the White Mountains of Arizona, which are the tallest mountains, and I lived in the mountains for two years, pretty much as a recluse. And that's when I found out I was born on Rumi's birthday. Before I found that out, I began writing and writing. So I will read you. I'm a little technically challenged. And I hope you all have coffee or wine or water or something. So I had a habit and still do of waking up about three in the morning and do I have to? Do I have to? Yes. So I grab my journal, and I have like 10 journals now, uh, and, and write. So this is called Death Comes. And if you are just uh, joining, I'm Cynthia Clayton. I'm reading my ecstatic poetry, which is much like Rumi's. Uh, I was born on Rumi's birthday, and he has been a muse for quite a while. So all of these poems are to the beloved, which you might have a different name. 
uh, since we're talking about the nameless oneness that is everything that is, that is basically love, and just showing up as light, and we're all returning to that oneness. Well, thank you for being here uh, and being a part of this oneness with me. Death comes. In the middle of the night, we whisper, Teach me how to love you. I want to get it right this time. Teach me how to love you. I want to get it right this time. Only one of us speaks these words. No person ever lived. No body ever died. No place to go. Nowhere to hide. No you and I. That story has died. And sometimes we feel like we are a kite way out on a, a string and, and, you know, the beloved's trying to reel us in and we're just like, ah, like, ah, like we just can't come and focus into that which we are, that which is blooming and blossoming and flourishing in us. So this one's called Far From You. I will not let go of your hand though you send me to far off lands. Strangers surround me, no, not they are you. Confusion, sadness, darkness, their milieu. A single tear drops from my once noble face, cast into hell realm to be saving grace. How far can I go from you to rescue all hearts headed home, bright love holding true? So I spent time on the Oregon coast for two years. It was on my bucket list to live right on the ocean and, and watch the storms come in and feel all that Shakti and this ocean that's connecting the whole planet with the waters of life and just, just receive that. So I did that for two years. And walking on the beach was inspired to write. This is called... Lost in the found. Come, be lost with me. Lose your grip. Drop the controls. Let go the clenched fists and tightened jaw. Get out of the show. Get off the boat. Come, drown with me. Come, resurrect, lose the worried minds, don't use it, lose it, don't use it, you lose it, choose to lose, be lost, be found, this cycle goes round and round. Jump off, leap for your life by losing the strife. Come to me, search only for seashells by the seashore. Seashells by the seashore. You will not refine what you have lost, but much much more.
we get so involved in thinking. Thinking can be a quagmire. And I taught thinking. I taught the art of thinking uh, in colleges in Oregon. I taught the secret of happiness. Basically, it's the art of thinking. Metaphysics, all of that knowledge, it's been great. But it's time to like release it. Just walk on the seashore, gather seashells. I picture like we are all a bunch of uh, butterflies on this beautiful rock we call Earth. So you are my friends on this rock. I've been afraid to be who I am, which is the part of me that is not me. So I go where groups of other emerging angels have clustered on a rock. You know, here's this gathering, that gathering, this gathering. They're all refuges. It's, it's wonderful to go with people that have open hearts and to just dance and sing. And so, go where groups of other emerging angels have clustered on a rock like butterflies in the storm. We're drying our wings here so we can fly again off to the next rock. Curious thing, our flights are getting shorter and the rocks closer, the gatherings larger, and soon there will be no islands and no water to cross. By our very presence, we burn away the waters holding us apart. There is only light now, begetting itself, consuming all elements in its combustion, sucking them up and spitting them out to form new life. And we are that, my friends, here on this rock. So there is a word for the beloved. Uh, how many of you have heard of the term Shakti? Shakti is usually the divine um, primal energy of feminine nature, that which manifests, Shakti. Shakti Man is another name for the potential Godhead before it manifests. So Shaktiman is where we all begin. And Shakti is how we are moving now uh, with our lives across the face of the planet. We are the Shakti. This is the song of Shakti to her Shaktiman. Shaktiman. I am your Shakti. Shaktiman. I desired life and you gave it. Now we are reacquainted. Sorry I didn't call you all those years before. The years fly by. And I realize I'm headed home. But Shaktiman, don't take me so quickly. I am yours. I know that now. You in me and me in you. My Shaktiman. You 
are my heart's deepest, deepest longing. But don't give me what I want just yet. I know I am your heart's deepest desire too. But your patience is notorious. I will dance and sing this song for you and whisper your name every day. This gift of mine, this life and love and joy and peace and beauty, you are spoiling me. But I can take it. Yes, I can. So, beloved other half of me, until we meet again, these tears are for both of us. For you are the source, the fountainhead, and I am the mighty river carrying you far and wide. Hi, Sandy. So can you guys uh, relate to that? We know we're almost home. But there's a part of us that just doesn't want to leap off the cliff because we don't know where we're going to land. But we're there. We're there, my friends. But we're not in control and we wish we were. We want to take that class or learn this. Or I have all the sacred texts from all the traditions that have ever been from time immemorial and, and on my laptop and I look at them and oh my God, my heart opens and I'm there and then I like, you know, whoosh, I'm living in this world again. Well, guess what? We can live in all places now. We have that multidimensionality if we will accept it. It's not scary, and it's not us doing anything. So we can't control our own surrender. That's like dressing yourself for your own funeral. When we have become fully ascended, there's no me there going, Oh, I'm ascended. I feel this bliss. No, I was exploring the idea of emptiness and bliss for some months and it's wonderful it's nirvana and that's that is our true nature but we're here to help all other beings know that know how special they are inside know there's nothing else you need to do the oneness is already here so this is called internaked in two your knowingness. I wish for us all to have this knowingness of the deepest truth of our hearts. Who's here? There's only one heart here. It has nothing to do with our personalities. It's pure love. Enter naked into your knowingness. So, you think We've come together to find out who we really are. Yes, to discover that part of us, not us at all, here, waiting in the wings, just off stage. It has come to find and meet us. Silly us. Did we think we were in charge? It needs us to find itself. Like great lovers, 
We all need each other to manifest the ecstasy of true living. For the heights and the depths and the sweetness of perfect life. Long standing in the shadows, we need our true lover. Now waiting in the wings. Disrobe and enter naked into your knowingness. This was the time we had arranged to meet. Disrobe and enter naked into your knowingness. This was the time we had arranged to meet. Go, melt into the arms of your lover and breathe the new world of the one now here. So I had thought I would read about 30 minutes. Um, if you would like to see more of my reflections, my website, CynthiaDClayton.com, has many reflections. Uh, would, would you like to hear a few more? I, this is my night. I'm just relaxing and hanging out. Uh, maybe give me a little sign if you would like me to read a few more. Gracias. Ah, welcome, Petra. I will read a few more. Of course, finding them could be a little tricky. You know, I actually wrote a few that rhymed, and like, I'm going, what's this all about? I don't write rhymes. And then I learned they were called quatrains, and indeed, Rumi had written some quatrains. They're very short. Of course, if you're just joining in, these are my songs, my poems to the beloved for 10 years, I have um, been writing many reflections, living in the forest, traveling, getting closer and closer into that oneness, admitting that it already is, and I already am, and I'm playing this game of like, I'm walking, walking, walking into the light. It's like, no, the light is all that is. We already are that. We're just pretending to stay away. It's like, let's don't be afraid anymore, guys. Let's just see what happens. Let's just be real, be our authentic selves. That's all that's needed. Give up the seeking, be the sought. So these are what I say to God. When you call my name through that open door and the air glittered golden from me does pour. I will have left all maps behind. No searching, nothing else to find. Cut, cut, cut me from this earthly plane that I may finally come home again. When, how are you, people do ask. I reply, I'm fine, fine, better than fine.
for with the beloved I do dine. I drink sweet waters from the source, and every encounter is a delectable course. And drunk on love, we both make merry. If you wish to join us, then do not tarry. For the royal hall doors swing shut soon. Come, come, we are saving you a room. And one more little quatrain. It's called The Last Stand. And realize if I ever am using any word like God, I mean actually everything. There are so many words for that oneness, which is and always has been. And we have no idea about so many things about it, but we feel it. And it's more than presence. A lot of us are into presence. We feel the spirit. What it is is absence. It's absence. Well, it's both. So this is called The Last Stand. Are you ready, right where you stand, to meet God? No more marching down dusty roads. You need to plod. Don't sort things out. No bags to be packed. No conditions to meet, for you are not flawed. Are you ready to meet God right where you stand? Release your life like sand in a dreamland. No set of beliefs in which to defer, only a wish to take hold of his hand. So my message in all of this, my beloved friends, is surrender to who you are. Oneness is achieved by a recognizing yourself. And we're at a time of allowing our authentic selves to come forth. So God said to me, can you give up all you've ever known and all you think you know and especially the need to know and just hang out with me simply be love. This will bring you to samadhi, to ecstasy. I said, then what is there to talk about? He said, exactly. So I also wake up a lot at sunrise and maybe it's time to get a drink of water. And next week I will um, be a little more organized perhaps. 
So this happened one morning at sunrise. Kissed by the divine. I stub my toes, climbing the steps to you. Joyfully, I bruise them. Even when I put on my finest dancing moccasins, I scuff the toes. Am I not lifting my feet high enough? How high are you really? When I part the drapery to witness the sunrise and feel the light, fire, heat, I cannot look or I would go blind. Such radiant life. But I feel your touch through the window. And I hear you whisper. Your attempt to move towards me is moving you away. Be still. Hold your breath for a moment. Feel me. My beloved, you whisper that I am you. I need not look for you. So I let you place your morning sunlight kisses on my cheeks. And my heart yields to the glow of our oneness. Do others of you wake up at dawn and just feel, wow, it's another day. This is the first day of the rest of my life. Wow, are you excited about life? Are you having dread and fear? Knock it off. We must learn to focus our minds and to work hard and diligently for our liberation. Excuse me. <laughs> Must remember bring Kleenex. This is another one I wrote at sunrise. It's called Sunrise Blessing. Ah. It is as if I've waited my entire life for this very moment. Nothing else matters. I hold my breath and bow my head for the blessing. Then my breathing returns in shallow sighs. Head back, eyes wide open to admit all the light I can. I begin to fill
the heart of the young bride, accepting her morning joy. The new world is here. In my breath, my eyes, my heart, let me be a joyful opening for God. This young bride is given back her true innocence every dawn as a life lover. So, friends, I'm so happy you're here sitting in my front room with me, experiencing oneness, opening our hearts. Have any of you that have just joined in heard of Rumi before, the poet Rumi? Maybe give me a little sign if you have, like the happy face or something. So I'm honored that I get to be Rumi's helper then. So let's see, I'm kind of winding down here. I'm telling you, there are so many books I have of my reflections. And uh, I'm finally starting to type them up. It's not my favorite thing to do. So this is a question I asked God. And I'm curious if you ask the God that we've created in our own need and image, uh, what the answer might be for you. I asked God if it was serious. This is what he told me. Exactly this. It ain't that serious. It really isn't. It's a fun journey. We're not imperfect. All of this stuff that happens that we don't like is just there to teach us something. So we're all standing on the shore if you're watching this, you are most likely a bodhisattva. You most likely have a very big heart. And you are here to free it, to love the way love itself does. And everything will show up in your life that you think you need, that you want, desires will, things will happen before you even ask for them. If you are living for the highest good of all, if your life is for others, if your life is just to be love, now that's not a bad, that's not a bad job. So this is the Bodhisattva path. There is no path home through the forest to a cozy hearth. One must carry his own kindling build his own fire on whatever shore he or she finds themselves. That those still swimming out there can come ashore and be rescued by the light and warmth from the blaze of the fire 
we're creating now. Tarry not. Ships are wrecking. Souls are flying into the waters. Don't go in the forest. Stay out of the forest. Wait on the shore for others to arrive. Together, we will create the pathless path by dancing circles around the bonfire we will build to the very end even using our bones So I think one more for tonight. I'm so grateful that you beloveds are watching. I'm hoping you're receiving something. This is not about information. It's about inspiration. Inspire others. Show up. Be yourself. This is called the airplane has landed. And let my words be your words. I've decided to quit running from who I am. There is nobody else, some better person, who will show up down the road on the new mission after the next spiritual workshop. I cannot live anymore. I just can't do it. Without seeing the beloved in all I meet, in all I am doing, and mostly from out the eyes and heart of this one same beloved inside of me. When I open my eyes in the morning, I remember whose eyes are seeing. I cannot be separate from those eyes, that heart, any longer. Not in any moment. Not with any breath. I must embody who I am. I must touch my feet every moment on the sacred ground, holding life here just for my feet. Like the airplane coming in for a landing, wheels bouncing on the runway, Touching down, holding friction in balance. My reluctance is now gone. The timidity and fear vanished. The one that I am is here. Now. Unafraid to be. So thank you, beloveds. Go to my website, CynthiaDClayton.com. Um, Karima is my name for my poems. And there are a lot of other reflections on there. I also just finished the ebook form of my book, Transform into Light Body. You can look that up on Amazon. Transform into Light Body. It's about the process that we are in, and I believe finishing for many of us in this lifetime. The light will have its way with us if we get out of our own way. There's only one heart doing all of this, and that heart is what is in me and what is in you. 
and I love you, even if I have not met you personally, that's a guarantee. So I believe next week at the same time I'll be back. Uh, a lot of my friends in India uh, let me know what time might work. It's very hard to pick one time. I guess these are saved if I do it correctly. So namaste. The light in me honors the light in you. May it be so. Goodbye for now.